Alrighty, so it's July, and since balls all happens in July in the scheme of big game releases, now is the chance for you to get stuck into some of the great games from earlier this year that may have fallen by the wayside. You know the ones, I'm talking that pile by the side of your bed, or the ones that are clogging up your Steam library. Maybe you installed them, maybe you even watched the intro sequence, or played an hour or so, but you sure as hell didn't finish them. Be sure to let me know your examples, but here are my picks. Let's start with an obvious one. Watch Dogs has been out for a month and a half now, so you really should be more than an hour into it. Yeah, okay, I'm only an hour into it. Whether you're waiting out its price tag or you've been distracted by Transistor and Valiant Hearts like I have, July is the perfect opportunity for you to get your Chicago hacking on. Even if you have been playing Watch Dogs, there's so much you can get stuck into. The main story, the side missions, and the multiplayer are all completely separate entities that you can devote yourself to depending on what you're interested in. Ubisoft's sprawling worlds are so frequently referred to as playgrounds for a reason. Also, you can decide to crack into the incessant car crashing and inability to drive. I'd say that's been my forte in the game so far. Alrighty, so this entry is a little bit biased since it is one of my favourite games of 2014 so far, but since some of you have expressed your love of RPGs in the past, let's talk Might and Magic 10 Legacy. A lovely nostalgic callback to when RPGs crossed from pen and paper to computers, Might and Magic 10 is the latest instalment in this series of turn-based old-school computer RPGs. Like a lot of older RPGs, the time sink sits at a tidy 40-odd hours, depending on your penchant for side quests. But the game has a great monster and quest-heavy world, and the turn-based combat demands enough tactical forethought that you'll rarely find yourself bored. If you rue the day devs decided to oversimplify and modernize RPGs, then this will well and truly grab your interest. Then again, if slow-paced, really detailed RPGs are not your thing, steer clear and maybe try out this next one. The pacing on this next one is pretty dependent on you and your skill level, or the number of times you rage quit. While you may get sick of other games out of boredom or being overwhelmed, this one will probably come to a fast end due to a broken controller. Or is that just me? That's right, I'm talking about From Software's Dark Souls 2. It's pretty widely considered to be a phenomenal game, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. Since July is relatively quiet, it could be worthwhile taking some time to make this game your bitch. You know, so it's not always the other way around. Dark Souls 2 is the sort of RPG that demands mastery of its different elements. Exploration, character optimization, and obviously, combat. And this is totally possible, it just takes time. For some people, an awful lot of time. Last up is a game I'm betting you either completed and felt pretty good about, or you completely forgot it existed. Either way, South Park The Stick of Truth is a real gem and a lot of fun, so you should probably finish it. Assuming you have a fairly high tolerance for crass humour and some basic understanding of South Park, this is a surprisingly great game considering it's based on a TV show. Honestly, even just as an RPG, it's great. The combat can exist within a turn-based realm or you can beat your foes to the metaphorical and literal punch by using the environment to incapacitate your enemies before you get into the fight. One of the best parts of the game is exploring the reference-riddled town of South Park and getting stuck into all the side quests you find along the way. You're also able to chop and change your practical and aesthetic gear to make your chosen one exactly who you want them to be. And that is it for Jess's favorite RPGs of 2004, I'm sorry, games you should finish in July. Be sure to let me know your 2014 favorites in that commenty bit down below. Last week I talked to you guys about some of my very favorite trailers from E3 that didn't get quite so much attention. Here were your favorite games of the show. Lawrence Van Rin pitched in his love for Sunset Overdrive, which I totally echo, saying, Sunset Overdrive was the best one. It actually made me consider getting an Xbox One for, something I refused until that trailer, Insomniac Rocks. Aileros for added, about Tomb Raider, I couldn't care less but the other four picks are just amazing. I did see No Man's Sky and Ori here on GS, but missed the other two. Yay for games putting so much effort into art direction. And finally, Brennan Chaudhry chipped in with No Man's Sky, want us to put That's about right. Be sure to leave me a comment letting me know what is on your two playlists for this week and if there's any games you've been meaning to get stuck into for a while. 
I'll see you again next week.